Hi there. Thanks for coming to the Doctopus session. I have never used this product in my life and am going to show you how to use it as I myself learn the same way. Um, I did do a little mini setup before, so I'm not completely wet behind the ears. But that said, I've never actually used this with students. Um, so let's, uh, let's begin. Um, to get Doctopus, just Google it, Doctopus. And it's the first thing you'll see. Uh, when you install it, you'll get to a spreadsheet, something that looks like this, and you can go and I always access it in the add-ons tab with Doctopus and uh, setup and select setup mode. It might also say launch. But anyway, either either way, no matter how you get there, the first thing you'll see is this. I want to use Doctopus to dot dot dot. Now, word of warning: um, the setup wizard for Doctopus. A lot of people always want to tell you that it's very easy to use. Trust me, from somebody who does all these things a lot, it's not. This is one of the more complicated tools to set up and use, and it's not easy to understand. Um, you know, I'm not going to say sorry because it's their product, it's not mine, but it's certainly not easy to understand what each of these do. That said, we will figure it out. Um, most of us are not using Google Classroom, so most of us are going to be doing this, distribute drive resources to a roster. So I'm going to click that. Now it says select roster, and I've actually created one already, but the ones that you've already created will always show up there. I'm going to actually build a new one, though, because all of us in this session will be building a new roster. So I'm going to do that. And now it's going to do some stuff. And you can either do it on this sheet or import from teacher dashboard. We're not going to do teacher dashboard because that's from random other places. So on this sheet. And now we can create roster. Now it's going to do some magical things, which is actually really cool from a strictly programming perspective. The way that this does this is quite excellent, but anyway. Um, so it says, go ahead, finish your class roster here, and then hit refresh. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little roster for this session with my own email. Let's see. Now, of course, you can always uh, import these from, <laughs> let's get Sarah, she's going to be mad. Well, uh, oh, you can always input the import these from um, Schoology if you want to do like a CSV import export thingamajig. Uh, you know, there's always shortcuts for getting data into a spreadsheet. But you know, what? it might just be easier to go ahead and type it right in, um, just to save yourself some some hassle. I know it's a pain, but it, you know, this this takes a while to set up anyway. So this is this is not going to really this is not going to really hurt. Um, let's see who else should we send things to. Let's send them to Ben. And how about DeLuca for, uh, you know, picking me to do this? <laughs> In case you're wondering, I did not sign up for Doctopus. I just said, hey, John, if you need help, let me know, and I'll do whatever you want. Note to everybody, don't say that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I've got four people. Hopefully yours will be populated with your students at this time. If it's not, I would suggest if you plan on, you know, moving forward um, from this screen with your whole student roster, pause the video now and finish that. Otherwise, go ahead and hit refresh. And now it's going to ask you to set the name of the roster, which I'm going to do right now. We'll say Doctopus PD folders. Or, excuse me, Doctopus PD roster. And I'm actually going to take DeLuca off because then he's just going to get emails from me. He's going to be mad. Let's see. Who else should I put down here? I know. Jerusha is a good candidate. Sorry, Jerusha. I don't even know if you're watching this video, but you just got spammed. Okay. Anyway, Doctopus PD roster. Next thing, create class folders. You're going to want to do this because this is how Doctopus uh, does its thing. Um, I, I definitely suggest having it create the class structure because it organizes it for you. Under the one exception that you yourself are somebody who's highly organized on Google Drive, if you consider yourself organized on Drive, uncheck this box, and it'll allow you to select your own hierarchy. But I'm going to go ahead and assume that ev most everybody's going to keep create class folders checked. It shows you how it does this. Um, it shows you the structure it's going to use. So under the Doctopus PD roster, that's the name. Um, it creates all these folders that have different purposes. It's got 
a teacher folder. It's got a folder where the whole class can edit. It's got a folder where the whole class can view. Now it's got a folder for students. And in each student folder, each individual student has access to each one of these folders plus you. So this is where like a student drops their work and stuff. And it continues. Um, pretty straightforward. So anyway, hit the magic red button. And after the loading GIF is done, there we go. Cool. Everybody's got spam in their email now. Yay. All right, now look what it's doing over here. It's populating, and I'm actually just going to do a little trick here. Um, it's populating the spreadsheet with the live information about the student folder key and all that stuff. You really should not edit much of this. I'll tell you which ones you can, but this don't edit. Um, all right, that's cool. So a new folder tree created, save roster, and continue is what we want to do. Thanks, Doctopus. We are successfully doctoring our Google Drive. OK, now is where it kind of starts to get, I don't know, I'm skeptical. But anyway, select sharing type. So there's a lot of different ways. If you really want to go nuts with the groups and differentiated things and all that stuff, you can. You can say, I want to share it as project groups. I don't know about that. Um, you can have the whole class look on a single shared copy, but if you've tried that before already on our Wi-Fi with the Chromebooks, that's not a good idea because when you have more than like three people on one Google spreadsheet and all of them are running on Chromebook clients, it just lags. Almost all the time, I'm going to suggest that you just do this. Individual, all the same. Um, with the one exception that you're trying to do collaborative lab reports, in which case you're looking here, you can do individual, uh, you can do differentiated groups or just like groups for different setups. Um, but I'm going to demonstrate with just all the same. Um, so we'll start there. All right, so let's look at what each of these things does. It's going to create the same separate individual doc for each student. Whole class access level. What this means is that if you want other students in the class to be able to view, comment, or edit the, each other student's work, that's what this means. I think for most cases, you're probably going to want to have no access, which means that a student can't send the link to their document to another student and just give them view access to it. It'll probably prevent cheating that way. Um, now, you know, that said, they can always go ahead and do this themselves. So this is really just more of a setup thing. It's not to be used as a tool to prevent cheating in that way. If you're concerned about that, this won't do that. It'll just set it up initially so that they'd have to go through extra work to share it. But it's certainly not hard. Um, but anyway, that's what the whole class has access to. Assign student access level. This is specifically to the student it's assigned to. Probably need to be able to edit it, but they could also just be able to comment or view. So I think we're going to leave that to allow edit. I'm going to change this to allow view for the whole class. Okay. Now you could check this where editors cannot change sharing permissions, but I've actually gone in and tried to do this as an editor, and you still can. So, you know, this is, again, this is a false positive here in that students can still change the sharing permissions of their work. It's really pretty easy. Um, so deliver to student folders, that's already grayed out and checked. That's good. Co-teachers, we're going to skip this, but basically if you have other teachers who use Doctopus that you want to use this spreadsheet, you can list them here. We'll just leave that blank for now. OK, no, go away. Try tonight, which means never. All right, save and continue. Let's see what happens. This is exciting. You think they could have chosen a better logo than an octopus destroying a bedroom? Like, what is it even doing? What is that graph it's even holding up? I guess it's holding up, like, a standard deviation thing. What does an octopus care about standard deviation? I don't know. Oh, this is going extremely fast because I'm recording a video at the same time. OK, so now we have to choose the assignment template. So this is where what we're doing is we're looking for the assignment that we want to share with students. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my Google Drive, I'll choose a different folder. And I'm going to look for, let's see, I'm going to find, oh, here's one. 
This is a unit I have for my AP Computer Science class. We'll do the first one that requires them to edit something. Oh, but it only wants the folder, so I don't need the actual, uh, whatchamacallit. I don't need the actual file yet. It just wants the folder. So let me, ah, let me go back in there. Choose a different folder. I'm going to choose the Unit 7 Machine Learning folder and select it. Oh my god, it sounds like there's a flock of runners coming. I better close the door. That was close. All right, so once you choose that folder in the drop down over here, you can actually see all the documents in it. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the one that I want to use, Machine Learning 101, and hit Save and Continue. Let's see what it does now. All right. So this is also pretty neat. Set assignment folder. Leave it how it sets it up there. It's probably a good idea. Um, you know, you can always create new folders or choose an existing organization. Again, if you're already well organized on Google Drive, do that. Um, this is pretty cool. So how do you want your student file to be named? Now, these money sign things, these are variables um, in the spreadsheet, and they stand for each of these columns. So money sign first name will, for each student, pipe in their first name. Money sign last name, for each student, will pipe in their last name. Money sign email, you get the idea. So it says, how do you want your student file name? Their last name, comma, their first name, comma, well, maybe it shouldn't be untitled spreadsheet. Let's name it uh, Watson 101, or How to Doctopus. Wow, it sounds like they're looting outside. Very sorry for that background noise. All right, send sharing notification to authors. That's kind of me. I don't need to do that. Um, all right, so seems like we're done. Why won't it let us continue here? Maybe we have to do this, create new folder. Oh, yeah, okay. Guess I had to click that create new folder thing. So, all right, student file, how to doctopus, for last name, comma, first name, that's cool. Let's save and continue. Looks like at this point it's going to go ahead and create the files for each student. It populates into the Doctopus spreadsheet some information about each of those. And when I run copy and share, it's not going to notify students. So if we wanted to send them an email notification, that's what we would do there. Um, that was what that last screen was all about. Uh, it looks like, let's go ahead and see what happens. I really have no idea. OK. So it looks like it's telling us what it's doing. It's running all these things. Wow, that's pretty magical. Very cool. All right, so it gives us a bunch of information. Let's hit Manage and Assess and see what happens. Now, there's another tool uh, called Gubric um, that if you want to attach a rubric to the document, that's how you use it. I'm not actually going to cover that in this video because uh, I, don't, I don't use it, but I'm assuming it's pretty easy. Um, I know Baxley uses Gubric and some other people, Dana. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people who use it, so ask around if you want to learn more about that. But let's look at some of this stuff. So it gives us the file name, the file key, which you don't need, the link to the actual file, which is neat. It shows you when it was last edited, <clears throat> edited excuse me. And then you can manually type in their grade and written feedback. Or if you did like attach Gubric, it would pipe those in for you. But you can manually type those in. Then, of course, there's these buttons that say Refresh Edits and Counts if you want to see how many students are editing. This is a neat feature, Embargo Docs for Grading. If you want to set a deadline, say the end of school right now, and you can't edit your documents after that, you can actually hit this button. And this will work, unlike the other thing, which won't, um, but this will work. You can give students comment-only access, and you can run the embargo now, which means they will no longer be able to edit the documents. Um, managed by this Doctopus spreadsheet. That's pretty useful. I know that, you know, most of this stuff I don't, I don't think is too particularly useful because I can, you know, I think you should just teach students how to use Google Drive. It's not that hard. But this is definitely something that's not easy to manage. Uh, 
So that's that's really neat. I like that. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm gonna open that up. Unembargo. Send feedback email. Let's see what this does. All right, so it looks like we can send templated emails to students as well that maybe we can notify them when their grades are done, but that's not going to be too useful unless their grades are done. Let's see how to grade these things. All right, I'm going to click on the link here. This will open up my submission. Uh, oh, yes, very good, very good, very good. Uh, okay, so this is going to receive a grade of 100, and this is awesome, obviously. Okay, let's grade Sarah's. This, this is not really more efficient than grading normally, than you normally would yet. Um, it is nice that it keeps it all in one place, but I'm just making up grades for these people. Um, Sarah obviously hasn't edited this yet, but I'm going to tell her that she didn't do so well. And please see... Uh, oh, um, let's see if there's something funny. Oh, um, your coding skills need a lot of work. Sorry. Not very nice. <laughs> um, let's see what Ben did. Okay, obviously I'm just making these up. This has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Um, let's see. Ben can have a 75. Nice job. And Jerusha, Jerusha, I'm going to give you a 10. I don't think you've ever used a computer before. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, that's just all made up. Doesn't matter at all. Um, so once we're done grading, what we can do is we could either unembargo the docs for revision if you want students to be able to revise them, or you can keep them locked and we can go to send feedback email. And this is neat because, look, it says recipient email address is money sign email. Again, that'll get their, each student's email from the table, which is good. Email subject, feedback on file name, again, another variable gets the file name. Dear first name, I've recently shared on you the assignment link below, which can be found in your class folder, best your teacher. Hmm. Instead, I think I want to say, dear first name, I've finished grading your assignment, money sign, file name. Notice how I'm copying the syntax for this exactly. Your grade is, let's see, grade. Here's some feedback on your work. And I've already written some in written feedback. I'm actually going to not send these emails <laughs> because it's not real work. But the point is, you do get the idea, right? This is how you can quickly send notifications to students about all of their um, feedback. And I know personally that, you know, you can also comment on their work, like you can do this and insert comments on the actual thing. And a lot of people do that, and that's great too. But this is nice for some summative feedback and also to just notify everybody that the grades are finished and what their grade is. What's also cool is that you have all this kind of in one place forever, which is neat. And uh, yeah, that seems like what what Doctopus is pretty good for. Um, again, if you're a rubric aficionado, check out this Gubric tool. I personally am not a rubric aficionado because it doesn't really apply to any of my classes. But, um, you know, that's kind of that's kind of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to Doctopus. And I don't know if I will use it in my classes. Let's see. No, it doesn't really fit too many of mine, but I certainly hope it fits some of yours, especially those of you who do, le who, who do a lot of like collaborative lab reports. This seems like a great tool for that. Uh, I know English teachers love it for you know, collaborative writing assignments and things like that. Um, you know, being able to put multiple people on the same spreadsheet and keep them all managed in one place is admittedly pretty nice. But anyway, that's all for now. Ciao.